Uh, now, the, the other question, now before I answer the coincidence thing, how is it possible that Rawling could have possibly known of the samurai wizard? That's all fine, Ken. That's fine. But you know what? There's no way she could have known about you. Single mother out in, you know, the UK. There's no way. Well, number one, think about this. Let's say you're writing a story about football. And this is the, one of the videos I have. Let's say you're writing a story about football, right? An inspirational story about football players and tackling the struggles it gets through to, in order to become a, a great high school football team. Wouldn't it make sense to at least go and check out a, f a high school football game or, you know, find out who won football that year? Would it, wouldn't it make sense? Right? Right? If you're writing a, a, a book about a, a, even surfers, let's say a kid surfer, shouldn't you at least do some research? I mean, it would make sense, right? Okay. So let's say you're writing a story about, you know, this little kid that goes to a school of of wizardry or school of magic shouldn't you find out if there really is a school of magic a world famous school of magic that's world recognized everyone around the world wants to go to okay In, inside of a castle that goes through all these adventures I mean shouldn't you find that out well I would think so I mean I would do it if I was writing a book about anything do some research okay so while while that was going on I'm at the academy well, in the world of magic I am, myself, not only was I doing the other stuff, I was actually starring at the Magic Castle. The world famous Magic Castle. Hogwarts Castle, whatever you call it. I'm starring there, closing the show in the Palace of Mystery. Okay, at the same time, I'm the number one student of the junior student at the Academy of Magical Arts. So this is in the world of magic. I also beat, as I said before, I beat David Coffrey, which is known as the most commercially successful magician in history, according to Forbes magazine. So if you're studying about the world of magic, it would make sense that you should at least know something, something about the world of magic. And that's where I stood as a samurai wizard. I'm starring at the Academy of Magical Arts. Well, how about this? Also at the same time in Japan. While I was in Japan, I actually was filming shows here and I was actually starring on NHK television specials and several television specials as the Samurai Wizard. Okay, with all my assistants, my dancers, my performers, because I was the Japanese American Samurai Magician's Wizard on these magic specials whenever they filmed it here, going, okay. Of course, I finished the show. I'm a representative of their country of Japan, so I was very famous all throughout. The, I was the only famous magician wizard in Japan. It was me, and there was another uh, woman, very famous. She wasn't a kid though. It was her name, Princess Tenko. Okay, it was me and her, and I'm a 17. That's what I was doing. Okay, uh, now in the United States. That's great. That's 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 Japan. How about the United States? Well, in the United States, of course, you are as I already explained. I'm doing the Emmy Awards. I'm not not just like a you know just not just like in the middle of the show. I'm like I open the Emmy Awards. How about that? I'm opening the Emmy Awards. That's right there at the 44th annual Los Angeles Emmy Awards. I was the presenter. Uh, I also did the second Emmy Awards show right there with with uh, Tommy uh, Tommy Davidson. Uh, and a Rams cheerleader, like a fly girl kind of thing. I made him appear uh, at the 44th Annual Primetime Creative Arts Emmy Awards back in 1992. 1992. Uh, there was an, obviously I told you, there's an off-Broadway play that was written about my high school life, produced in New York by the Foundation Dra Dramatist Guild. They hired a great actor to play me, Daniel. Not Radcliffe. <laughs> they didn't hire Daniel Radcliffe. They hired Daniel Day Kim. He wasn't a known actor at the time. I don't know if you know him today, but he is actually a star of a show called Hawaii Five O. They casted him to play my character in New York, off Broadway. Okay, this is the United States. Well, oh, that's Broadway. That's the Emmys. I mean, come on. That doesn't mean everyone in the country knows you. Well, I was also working for the First Lady <laughs> at the time. Okay, I was working for the First Lady of the Reagan administration. Nancy Reagan, wonderful lady. Okay, 
Uh, she had a program called the Nancy Reagan After School Program, which was, uh, which was getting young minds to not go into the bad influences uh, you know, of peer pressure, drugs, alcohol, right? Uh, activities that are not you know, good for young children, right? And they had me as the spokesperson. <laughs> so this was being broadcast throughout the entire country. All students during the 1990s, okay, kids, grade school kids were being, this was being played in their classrooms, in every classroom throughout the country. And I was a spokesperson. That's me with my, I had blue hair then. It was kind of dark blue. You can't tell as much, but I had dark blue hair then as well. Ken Hayashi. Okay. They're thinking, wait a minute. That's fine. Ken, that's the United States. That's Japan. And you know what? Even though she wrote a book about magic, she just did not know what was going on in the world of magic, the number one wizard, you know, the, the school of magic in the world. She didn't know anything about that. She lives in the United Kingdom. Come on. Absolutely not. That has nothing to do with what's going on in her little community. Now, of course, you know, as we already talked about magazines, articles, newspapers, television, we've already gone through all that stuff. You know, I got recognized by the Emmy Awards as the youngest producer ever, okay, to be working on the Emmy Awards, two of them. That's right there in front of the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. So these are the people that I have. But you know what? In the UK, that does not happen. I mean, <laughs> that's, the, that's the United States. That has nothing to do with us. Except this. Do you remember where I went to school? Recall where I went to school. I said that at the very beginning of this presentation. Where did I go to school? That's right, I went to Oxford. The school that J.K. Rowling wished she always dreamt she would always be accepted into, but her application was denied. She did not go to Oxford, right? That story is well known. She did not get accepted into Oxford. I went there, I was, I was hanging out with the best and brightest minds of all England. Of course, the people at Cambridge probably don't, you know, will argue against that, whatever. Oxford, Cambridge, whatever. I'm. That's what I did. And every night I'd go out and hang out with all the Oxford friends of mine, different pub every night, hang out with all these guys, and some ladies too, right? And just talk and experience life. And also I was telling them about my adventures back in the States. Well, that's just the people at Oxford. that They wouldn't have known about you. Well, actually, the, the funny thing was... If you have you ever had a Guinness? Anybody on uh, listening to this have ever had a Guinness? You know what a Guinness is? Guinness is a, of course, there's Guinness World Record, all that stuff. They, they have a beautiful drink. It's called an, uh, a Murphy. I'm sorry, a, a Guinness Stout. Guinness Stout, my favorite drink at the time. Uh, Guinness Stout, very popular. It's got a very dark, rich chocolate kind of beer stout with a nice thick, uh, like head that goes on top. And that's the drink that I would drink all the time at every pub. So the Murphy's Corporation, which is the main competitor to Guinness, thought that that was cool. That every time I go into a pub, you know, everyone looks at me like, what the heck is a samurai walking into a pub? You know, like the, imagine the looks on their faces. Well, they thought, hey, why don't we shoot a commercial of you doing that, Ken? And I said, sure, that's fine. So I flew out to Ireland. They shot a commercial with me drinking an Irish stout, the Murphy's Irish stout, ordering a Murphy's going, Murphy's. You know, if you check that video out, it's under Murphy's Samurai Wizard. Again, the link will be down there. And it was a huge sensation throughout the entire country. It was being played throughout the UK, throughout Ireland, Scotland, and everywhere where Murphy's was being uh, sold onto the market. It was being blasted out there. Billboards were made. It was huge campaigns and magazines. People were 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 doing that, like going Murphy's and ordering it that way that I did it. It's a kind of wizarding move. And I pick up the, the the bottle and I drink it. You can watch the video, see how I do it. That was being blasted out all the time throughout the United Kingdom before her book was published. Just FYI. All right. So it's almost like today, if you think about the most interesting man in the world, right? It's like, what's well, a bizarre commercial, right? The most interesting man in the world. It's like saying, oh, I've never seen that commercial. Really? You've never seen that commercial? That's ridiculous. 
It's almost like back in the 80s, there was a commercial that was so iconic. Where's the beef? You know, with a, a Wendy's commercial. Some of you probably, it's way too old for you to even understand what I'm talking about. But there, was, there are iconic commercials that come out that when they do come out, the entire country knows about it. They quote it. All right, so in the United Kingdom, I'm being blasted out of Murphy's commercial. And you know what? Just to even top it off with a little cherry right on top of there, Ghost in the Shell was actually very popular at the time. I was like, what are you talking about now, Ghost in the Shell? I thought we were already done with that with Scarlett Johansson. doesn't matter. Ghost in the Shell uh, had a very popular uh, anime series that just came out. Huge sensation. Everyone was like going, that's fantastic. They decided to make an anime adaptation of me and that commercial. Starring in that commercial doing the same thing and that was being played throughout the United Kingdom consistently constantly back in 20 plus years ago So let's take a look at that again most interesting wizard in the world go check it out watch the actual commercial You can go see that Let's take a look So I am the samurai wizard in the world of magic I am the most Famous Samurai Wizard in Japan. All of Japan. I am the most famous Samurai Wizard in the United, King, uh, United States. And I'm the most famous Samurai Wizard in the United Kingdom. How could you not know who I was? Especially if you're going to write a story about a kid wizard. Hmm. Kind of interesting. All right, so that was your second chance. You wrote that answer down. Okay, now, the coincidence. Oh, my gosh, we still have to go on the coincidence thing. Okay, so the answer is number two or number five. I'm going to go with the coincidence angle. I know some of you thought, you know what, that's all fine and dandy. Maybe she found out about you. Maybe blah, 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 that it's a lie, all that stuff. But you know what? It's just a coincidence. Come on, Ken. It is a coincidence. It's not based on your story she's an, a, such an inspirational writer she she wrote this from her imagination it's just a coincidence and you're trying to take credit for her work fine let's who likes math i think i asked that question earlier some of you already checked out well if you already checked out then you're really going to check out now but some of you are into math so i'd like to address all you logical thinkers out there okay logical thinkers all right Rather than saying, oh, that building is big, you can say, hey, that building has 80 stories. That's a logical thinking. 80 stories is bigger than 60 stories. It's logical thinking. So let's just take the odds of winning the lottery. All right. The odds of winning the lottery, uh, and we're in California here. So California lottery, Mega Millions, I just grabbed one of those and just said, okay, Mega Millions lottery has 70 possibilities, meaning 70 different numbers that you can pick. Okay. If you were to pick five out of five correct numbers you would become a millionaire that's right what are the odds of hitting five out of five numbers it should be simple simple enough right well that actually calculates out to twelve million six hundred and seven thousand three hundred and six to one to hit all five out of five numbers now isn't that amazing that i calculated that out Actually, no, not really, because it's it's on the back of a ticket. Every every ticket has one. So sorry. Okay. All right. All right. Let's move on here. It would be neat if I did calculate that out. But here's the other question. The other question is now. Pay. Please pay attention. Please pay attention now. What if there were 30 key components that matched up? What if 30 key components happened to match up? What would that mean? Hmm. Now, if you put that all on the same ticket, actually, the, the, the odds get less. So it's actually easier to get 30 on a single ticket than, 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 than to break them up into several tickets. So if you were to break them up into six separate tickets, meaning that you were to get five matches on six separate tickets, do you get that? 30 tickets, I mean, 30 numbers that matched up. 30 random numbers that matched up. Okay? 30 random numbers that matched up. That means, what would that mean? Okay? That means, what are the odds? The odds would be the probability of winning six times. 
getting five numbers correct, but not the mega ball, which is you can order, you can have a six number, then the answer is actually uh, one under twelve million six hundred seven thousand six hundred and three hundred and six to the power of six, or four tredecillion to one. 4 tredecillion to 1. That's 4 and 42 zeros. Now, I had this actually calculated by Professor Ann Siswanto. Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, it's just a coincidence. It goes, okay, that's fine. Now, Professor Ann Siswanto, which I take Zumba class with, uh, she actually has her undergraduate from UCLA in mathematics. She's got her master's in mathematics and statistics at UCLA, and she also has her doctorate at UCLA and a current college professor, mathematician college professor. She helped me calculate that out. Not helped me, she just gave me the, the calculations for me. Okay? If 30 out of 30 things match up, and these are not random things, we are talking about key components. Key components. Remember that story I said about this? I go, hey, listen, listen there's, there's a fictional writer saying, hey, I, I wrote this great fi fictional inspirational story about a bodybuilder that becomes an actor that becomes a governor of a land. Okay, great. Who's that story about? Come on! You know who that person's about, obviously. Okay, three out of three. It's obviously a person that you wrote down on answer number one. Question number one. Well, what if there was a person that says, listen, I wrote this fantastic fictional story about a, a kid. He has parents that are wizards, and he goes to school of wizardry, and then eventually beats the world's greatest wizard in the world as a boy wizard. That's a great story. Well, I wonder who's that story about. That's only three. <laughs> okay? What happens if there's not three, but ten? How about if there's not 10, but there's actually 30? And we're not talking about random, random things here, okay? We're not, like my parents, they could have been anybody. They could have been firemen. They could have been a, a doctor, a, a gardener, a, an attorney, a, you know, whatever, okay? They could have been anybody, but they are magicians. The year I went to that school, 1990, out of all the years, 1990, it's the same year, the owl, okay? All the things in your, the school I went, literally, Oxford University, literally, like, come on, seriously, seriously, it's Oxford, you, you just filmed it right at Oxford. The name of the headmaster, Roldor versus Dumbledore, I mean, it is key components, 30 out of 30 matches, identical matches. There are more than 70 different possibilities on each. I could have gone to any school in the world. Oxford. Shoot, if I got in Oxford, I could have gone to any school in the United States, but I happen to go to school in UK, United Kingdom. That's over a thousand different possibilities, not 70,000 different possibilities. Does that make sense? So actually, the number is astronomically even higher than four tradecillion to one. All right? So why does the boy stories match? Well, some of you said it's a coincidence. Okay. Yeah, it's a possibility. I'd like to kind of go over uh, the, the po uh, another question to you. I'm going to give you a second chance. And the reason I'm not giving you a second chance is just because a second chance. You've already answered the question once. But it's almost like playing poker. When you play poker, I don't know if any of you guys play poker. But when you play poker, you get a set of cards. Depends on what kind of poker game you're playing. And you have the option, sometimes not text home, but you have the option to look at the cards and go, mm, do I want to keep these cards or I'm going to give the cards away and take another set of cards. Okay, so if you play poker, you understand how that game works. So I'm going to give you another option for you to answer again. Okay, so this is question number five. Answer this again. It's your second chance to answer. Now, if you want to stick with your answer, that's okay. Answer it again. So if your first answer was, hey, you know what? You're lying. It's a lie. Boom. It's a lie. That was question A. Uh, number two, right, would be Q2, lie, A lie. And then if you're saying, you know what? After I've heard all this, it's still a lie. Fine. Your Q5 is A again. Okay, that means you stuck with your answer. That's okay. 
Now, if you want to change your answer, you have the option to change your answer, just like you're playing poker. It's not a big deal. You take your cards, you throw them away, says, you know what, I'm going to take another set of cards. That's okay. So at this point, right now, go ahead and answer again. I'm going to go over the last two. Okay? Second chance. Why does the boy wizard story match? Is it A, B, C, D, or a, uh, E? Go ahead. Again, I'm going to give you like five seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Go ahead and write that answer down. I'm not. Don't pause the video. Just type it in. You should be already used to it. Q5, question five. Put in your answer, okay? And don't let other people's answer deter you. Just write your answer down. Just your, And don't write a paragraph of what you think yet. You can write comments later. Flame me afterwards later. Okay, that's fine. Okay, great. Hopefully you've done that. All right. So the second time you, you've answered that question, it's either I'm a lie, I'm copying Rowling's story, you're sticking with to it. That's my story, I'm sticking to it, whatever. Uh, <laughs> magicians are not wizards. Coincidence based on true events. All right, so let's move on. So.